Greetings, Python coders. This is once again Alan D. Moore, and I am, as always, the author of Mastering GUI Programming with Python, a book that will gladly stand up and claim to be Spartacus for you so that you can learn the PyCute framework. Available from the publisher, Pact Publications, or Amazon, or wherever fine books on GUI programming are sold. All right, in previous videos, we have built a simple text editor, and I'll show it to you here. And it is a nice looking text editor, but it is kind of boring and gray and very default looking. We're going to look at how we can style this text editor using something called Cute Style Sheets. Now, if you are a web developer or a web designer, that word style sheets should ring a bell. You've probably worked with cascading style sheets that are used in web development, and hopefully you are fairly comfortable with them. The idea here is very much the same. To show you how this works, uh, let's pop into our code here. We are in the main window. Um, we're going to run self.textedit, and we are going to set the style sheet property. So every widget in PyCute has this property, style sheet. We set it using set style sheet. And we just have to set it to a string. So let's say I want my background color in my text edit to be orange. I would say background dash color, just like in uh, CSS. And I can set that to orange. All right, let's save that. Let's run our code. And you can see I've got a nice orange background, perfect for the fall weather. All right. Uh, I can also make some changes to the font. I can say font size, uh, we'll say 16 point. And we can set the font weight to be bold. All right, and just for nicety's sake, Let's go ahead and break up this string. All right, now when I run that, I have large bold text. Awesome, so I can do this on any widget at all. Um, I can even do it on my main window. So let's see, self.setStyleSheet capitalization right. Uh, we could set the rest of the program background color to blue. And that is pretty hideous, but it shows you that uh, you can add that style sheet to any kind of widget. And notice that um, because we set it on our main window, that property has uh, also cascaded down to all of our widgets. So our sidebar here, uh, our toolbar, our menus, they're all blue. Uh, all of these child objects have inherited that style. All right, so this is one way to use style sheets. You can go through widget by widget and customize things like that, background colors, fonts. You can add borders. You can do all kinds of fun things, but that is a little tedious. There is also a different way we can do this. And I'm gonna go down here and actually apply a style sheet to our app. So first let's create a global variable called style sheet. We'll use a triple quoted string. We'll just leave that empty for now. And then we can apply the style sheet using set style sheet Oops. style shoot that must be the past tense of style sheet now let's say we want to change the color of our text edit again so what we can do in this global style sheet is give a widget type just like that use curly braces and then we can define 
our properties. So background color orange, font size 16 point. Okay, there we go. Okay, next we'll try a Q widget. And we will set the background color of Q widget to light blue. Now we don't actually have a Q widget in our program. However, notice that everything turned blue, including our Q text edit. So this shows you a little bit about how this works. Because everything in here derives from Q widget, ultimately, all of those child classes get this CSS statement, this QSS style sheet. Um, go ahead and quit this. However, if I want to just affect Q widgets and not any of the child classes, I can put a dot here that will only affect things that are actually a Q widget, which actually nothing in our GUI is. So you can see that nothing has turned blue. So again, no dot means this kind of widget and all its child classes. A dot means only that kind of widget and nothing else. All right, we can also, instead of just colors, we can use images. Um, so I could say background image, and I've got one handy here. Uh, we use the URL statement here, and I will say tile dot. PNG. I can give it a local file path, or I can also use a cute resource here. If I have a, this in my resource file, I could do that. I don't, so I'm just going to do it this way. Okay, and now you can see that puts our image. We've got a nice, cool lightning kind of pattern there in our text edit. All right, now suppose that we want just a specific widget to be affected. Uh, let's say our submit button right here. Uh, yeah, our submit button. Suppose we had a bunch of push buttons in our application. We don't, this is the only one, but we only wanted this submit button to be affected. Well, what we would have to do is set that submit button's object name. That's the first thing we'd have to do. This does not happen automatically in code. It does happen automatically if you're using Qt Designer. Uh, it will automatically set an object name on every widget. This is something we have to do ourselves. Once you've done that, you can use the pound sign. And we will give that, say, a border. Two pixels solid. Oh, let's say red. And a background color dark red. All right, and you can see our button now has a border and a color. Okay, what's more, you can actually access sub elements of certain types of widgets uh, by using double colons. So for example, Q checkbox, I can grab the indicator of that and let's set its background color to green. So for the Q checkbox, the indicator is this actual checkbox. Now notice that killed my check mark, and I'll explain why here in just a minute. But what we can also do is use a single colon to indicate a state. So we'll say checked, it's green, and then we can set Q checkbox indicator unchecked, and we'll set that background color to red. So there we go. Now when we check it, and I apologize to 
those of you who have to deal with color blindness, this would be a bad widget to use in production. Uh, but now you can see when I check it, it turns green. When I'm not, it turns red. So that is the basics of Q style sheets. It's very similar to CSS. Um, you can apply it to individual widgets. You can apply it across the app to all widgets of a certain class. You can apply it to individual widgets using their object names. Let's talk real quickly about some of the limits of these style sheets. So what you need to understand before you dive into these things, a couple things. First of all, this is not CSS. It looks like CSS. It smells like CSS. In the dark, with sunglasses on, you might think it's CSS, but it's not CSS. It's a fork of CSS2. So if you are a hotshot web ninja and you have painted the Mona Lisa in CSS and rendered a complete Star Wars trilogy using nothing but CSS transforms, good for you, but your skills do not transfer here. Um, there's a very limited set of things you can actually do using cute style sheets. You can set background colors, font settings, margins, padding, uh, borders. You can add images. That's about it. Animation, not happening. Transforms, uh, no, none of that. Um, can't do flex box, can't do grid. You're not doing any of that kind of stuff. No layout stuff. It's pretty strictly just colors and fonts and padding. That kind of very basic stuff. All right. Uh, the other thing is that not everything works on every widget. For example, we have a hover state. So you might think, Q push button, hover. You might think, well, I can make my background color red when I hover that Q push button, right? That does not work. Hover is not actually supported on that widget. There's only a few things that are. So to find out what is and isn't supported, you need to visit this reference that is part of the Qt documentation. And it will go through all of these different uh, widgets, what is supported, what is not supported. Uh, it goes through all these properties. Again, you can see it's backgrounds, borders, uh, fonts, some sizing things, margins, different things. There's even a few things that don't exist in CSS that are cute specific. Do look that over. Don't just assume that because you can do it on the web, you can do it in, in Cute. You probably can't. Uh, the final thing to know about Cute Style Sheets is that this is not actually how um, widgets are rendered internally. Okay, there's a whole different system for how widgets are drawn on the screen, and that might be the topic of a future video. But for now, understand this is just sort of a nice add-on on top. Okay, and you, to show you this, I'm just going to grab a random widget here. Let's say our text edit. So I'm going to print out its style sheet. We haven't set one. We're just going to print out the default style sheet. Yeah, it's just blank. There is by default no style sheet. So you might think, well, how do I get that default style, the default appearance? Well, it's it's not there as a style sheet. You can't retrieve the default look and m edit it in some way. That doesn't work. This is just kind of an override that you can do to change appearances very easily without digging into how it actually works. So keep that in mind. Um, test this out. Have some fun with it make your applications look uh, silly or amazing or whatever you do. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I will try to respond. Uh, in the meantime, please check out my books. Have a great time coding and God bless.